five. What? You started with numbers. You're oh. at five. What letters? <laughs> I guess I lost letters. Start so with F. I'll just add other things. <laughs> I'll make believe it's letter F. Uh, big one. I taught this to my students last term. Big one. Non-specific. All of these are non-specific. Works against them. So I ask this question. Information, good or bad? Both? Yeah. Good. You may not like it. You may not like the symptoms of information, but it's there to what? Protect you? And there are five stages of information. Five signs. Five signs. First four were the classical, they rhyme. They are rhubarb, calorn, tumor, dolor, and number five, loss of function. Okay, so let's see what happens. You get an infection, okay? Let's do an infection of your skin, okay? Or maybe it's not an infection. Maybe uh, you have an injury. You cut yourself, okay? In either case, in the dermis of your skin and in the subdermis, you know, the hypodermis, you have all kinds of cells. And one of the group of cells you have are good old mast cells. Do you remember that from last term? How many remember mast cells? Good. I thought when you study tissues, you learn about mast cells. And if you injure an area, you, you kill mast cells. You with me? And with mast cells, you can also include basophils. Because mast cells are basophils that have left the blood. What leaks out of an injured destroyed basophil. What's the big one? Histamine. I'm going to give you some I haven't given last time. Serotonin. Prostaglandins. And not only do these leak out of not the histamine, but the plastic landing also leaks out of injured tissue, other cells, injured tissue. What else leaks out? Pinings. These last two from injured tissue. Anyway, you know about all four of them pores? All four of them pores. I'm going to draw a capillary. Capillary, this is a cross section. This is a simple squamous epithelium. That's all the capillary is, is simple squamous overlapping each other with a basement membrane on the outside. So here's your capillary. Arterials, which means little arteries. So 
Yeah, our tubules are lined, listen to me, with simple squamous. But you know what else they, they have? They have, in their thickness, a little bit of muscle, a little bit, a little bit of what? Elastic tissue. So nothing can get in and out of an arterial line. It's too thick. And where do arterioles come from? They come from arteries which are even thicker. You all following me? And then if the blood leaves a capillary, where is it going? It's going into a little vein. I'll just go like this. It's a little vein, you know, to carry the blood away. This is a venule. And venules lead to bigger veins, to big veins, which are even thicker. So the reason I'm telling you this, the only place where things can enter and leave the blood is the capillary, because that's what? A single layer of simple squamous. Everywhere else is what? Thick, right? It has other tissues that are in the right sense. So here's what histamine these chemicals do. They cause the arteriole. Not the capillary, don't get caught in this. Capillaries don't have any muscle, right? They're just simple squamous. But histamine, serotonin, prostaglandins will cause vasodilation. You know, the word vaso meaning vessel, dilate. Which vessels dilate? The arterial dilation. The arteries are going to dilate. And if the arteries dilate, does more blood come through? And therefore, does more blood come into the capillaries? Mm -hmm. Capillaries swell the blood, and the area now has so much blood, you know, where the infection is. What color does it look? Red, rubor. What does rubor mean? Red. Where is all this blood coming from? It's coming from the interior of your body, where the temperature of the blood is what? Much hotter than it is on the surface. And so the inflamed area, which has what? More hot blood, how does it feel? Warm, right? Mm -hmm. And the term for heat is calor. You know calorie? You know calories are a measure of heat. And they ask you how many calories you burn, we, we do it on how much heat you produce. Mm -hmm. So far, you got an inflamed area, you got what? It's red, blue blood, calor. Now, You've now pushed more blood into the capillaries. You all with me? And to boot, you know what histamine did? Histamine made the capillaries more leaky. What does that mean? It means that she got more blood, more blood coming in, more fluid. This is not blood. More fluid is going to what? Leave the capillaries. It's not blood, this is just a flat thing. What's leaving the capillary? You know what's leaving the capillary? Normally what leaves the capillary is what? Water and small things like glucose, amino acids, right? Did we do that? Yeah. Whoops. Right? But now, your capillaries, look, I do this so well. Here's one epithelial cell in the capillary, here's the other. They're, supposed, they're normally like this. So fluids can get out either through the cells, some, or between the parts, the space where they overlap. Now look what happened. Notice the space got bigger, and one cell meets another. Can more fluid now get out? You bet. And, and you got more pressure, right? Because the arterial has what? Dilated, like opening the faucet on the sink. You get what, more blood rushing in. And what leaves? Fluid, and this time, a little protein, right? Because now you have what? More leakage. And where does all of that fluid go? It goes into the interstitial fluid space. Now the space here, outside, this is interstitial fluid. And of course, you know, here are your cells. So if you're pushing more fluid into the interstitial space, you hope that some of it can what? Be drawn back into the blood. But if you're pushing out more, it gets drawn back. And you say, no problem. 
cursor toward the cerebral lymphatic capillaries. Remember they picked up extra fluid? Remember that? Oh, the ones that look like the fetus? Hmm? You guys were doing this? Everything this term builds and builds and builds on what it were. The capillaries, the lymph capillaries, are overwhelmed. They can't what? Bring back all the fluid. So the fluid keeps building up in your interstitial, in your uh, interstitial fluid space. And ha what happens to it? It begins to swell. 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 Right? You ever get inflammation? Does it swell? Mm -hmm. So what do you know so? And what is the word for swell? Tumor. Mm -hmm. That's going to surprise you. You learn tumor is a growth. It's not. It is, but the real meaning of tumor means to swell. From Latin, tumor means to swell. That, that screws people up. They think you grow a tumor. <laughs> That's nothing to do with that. In this case, we're using, using the Latin meaning of tumor, which means to swell. So now you've got an area that's red, right? You've got an area that is what? Warm. It has what? Swollen. And as it swells, it presses on the nerves in the area. And what do you get? Pain. Pain. And what's the word for pain? Dolor. Dolor. Anyone here named Dolores? <laughs> I haven't had a divorce in a long time. I think parents now look up 